um, and you type something when it says your chat messages sent from here it'll just erase it so that still be your first time that you clicked in there or did something in there and then this is the send message um, string before data so if it's the host we're going to uh, need an index number stream for data equals the username and host and what they wrote um, then send to all connections preventing error again so from one to the highest um, it says don't send with yeah because we don't need zero zero is the host um, so from one to the highest send data this and stream before data <coughs> stream before data is this up here the username the host and what they wrote so we had that in front of this because we need a code to check and see what case that is being written back to the host or the client then we update the um, lobby chat is equal to itself and an enter space the username host in the text message. Now this, you notice it does not have any send data. This is to yourself. Um, this is that thing where I talked about like Gears of War. If you if you notice that when someone hosts, the reason they cannot die um, is that the data is sending back and forth until it comes back to the host and says, hey I was shot. Um, here we don't need to say send data to the host and then post it. Or send data to other people. Um, it's the same thing as the client. The client doesn't send data to somebody, pick it back up, and says, "Hey, I sent something out." No, it should be the client sent something out. So he sends data out, but at the same time, on his screen locally, the uh, code gets updated. So that's what this is doing. It's saying the lobby chat room is updating. Um, it's equal to itself, that username and host in the text message. So it's not sending in data at this point. It's just simply updating itself. So if you weren't connected to somebody and you sent a message, um, it's going to actually just show up in your chat room, which is the way it should be done. Uh, <coughs> it prevents a lot of lag problems and makes it a lot faster. Um, I don't know why people get that kind of confused. Uh, so here's the string before data. Um, this is if they're not hosting. So if they're not hosting, we get the user's name. Um, and then the colon and the message they sent and we're going to send data again this username and the text message excuse me I'm trying to click up here so the client is sending that and then it updates their lo lobby chat again it's just updating it locally um, so move down if text goes too far in the text box we're setting the lobby chat room to equal the length of the text so for instance, if my crosshair is right here and someone sends me chat room stuff, it will be at the end of the lobby chat. And then empty the text message. That's where after they type something, they hit enter or <coughs> send. We're going to hit erase so that they can write something else now. And then we're going to set the focus back in the same box that they're typing. So that's a lot of stuff. Um, go ahead and save real quick again just in case you did something. And we're going to go ahead and run this. Um, so I'm going to run one for hosting. And we'll run one for a client. So we got a name. Zach OX. Go ahead and host. And there I am. Okay, so if I click here, yeah, it does remove it. Now I'm going to minimize this. And I'm going to pick up the... Um, what I did is I... Uh, compiled the program on the desktop. The way you do this is you go to file and then uh, make when your make your sample .exe or whatever it is. It'll ask you where you want it. Um, I put it on the desktop, and the reason I have to do this is because you can run one in the debugger, which I did. If you run it multiple times, you have to have an application that you made. So here's the same application. <coughs> So we're going to type in, uh, just put a client as their name, join, and it's going to be that IP address that should connect to this one. Hit start, and it connects. So right now we can type a message. Hey, 
and you'll see it instantly goes there. Even if this was really slow internet, it does it extremely fast. Hi. Um, now, what if you want multiple people? Well, let's say a third person connect. Let's put a name. Put my dad's name in there. Join. Start. And you see it adds their names. Um, it says who you are on those windows. And it says that who has connected to you. The host first did, then the client. And now Larry can say, hey, how's things going? And it gets on the other screens. And then you notice that it erased the message, like I said, here. And you can type text back in. And you notice that as I type further and further down, um, this right here goes further down by code. That's why the cell start moves at the very bottom. So it's, if you're looking up here, it should actually go down. See? It did. It went down automatically. And that's how it should be. Um, so it makes it easy to keep track of what everyone's typing. So let's go ahead and exit somebody. Let's go ahead and exit this client over here. And you see he says, client has left the lobby. Hey! Well, he left. That sucks. And this guy could say, well, I'm leaving. And then he'll say, not cool. <laughs> So the host leaves, and it's going to give, excuse me, error message, uh, host has left, closing program. Um, this one, I have to see what that error message is, reason for it. I think the reason it did that is because, oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's because I didn't update to this one. Yes, place on the desktop. Okay, we're going to try this again. Host. Okay, so the host is going to leave. Okay, he has left. Okay. Go back in here. And let's go ahead and put host again. Oops. I did not mean to do that. We move the host up here. Uh, let's have another client. Client one. And client two. And then we're going to decide that the host is just going to leave. It gotta go. Host has left closing program. Okay. Okay. So you see it works. Um, you can have any number of people. Uh, I did test it a little earlier ago. So you can just keep adding and adding and adding people in. There is no limit except for the six sixty-five thousand five hundred and thirty-five uh, is the control ray limit. Um, but uh, I would put a limit of sixteen at most. Um, that'd be pretty simple to do, just editing this code. Now, I did go through this quickly again. I always say this. I went through it extremely fast. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions, a lot of confusion. Um, it's not simple. Uh, it just gets more complicated. But basically, with what you should know is in the data, the thing that you should study the most is the data arrival. <coughs> So studying the data arrival, you want to understand what this is doing. Um, the way I'd look at it is I would I would write my own program. If you want to be really good at this, start from the very beginning and just look at what I wrote, understand why, and then write your part of your program with that. Um, why, then write your part of the program, why that, and then so forth. Um, you can start very slowly by the form load. Um, this or that, you know, check. Um, and once you spend a few hours, you'll get down and down further until you basically have pretty much the same stuff I have here. Um, and you'll understand much better than just reading it off the screen because you actually typed it in yourself on your program. Now, that's one thing I would do. Um, again, this will be ready for download. 
I'm sorry I went through this quickly. Send me messages, comments, whatever. This would be perfect to go over some of the stuff here. Um, I wouldn't mind making another video. Uh, hopefully we can move on from this. And this chat room is pretty cool. Um, we'll try to send some code uh, for a video game, like a memory game maybe. Um, that would be in the data arrival section again. And basically what I could do from here is to have a different case. Case 006. And whenever I want to send that data, I'd have that line, 006, um, space, and then something written. Let me go over that real quick just to show the data is going to come like this. Uh, line, some kind of, excuse me, line through zero something so far. I only have up to five. But let's say I write six, space, um, let's say Santa it could be a Santa picture um, when we're playing the memory game. <coughs> so if I receive this data, first thing this code above is going to do is going to extract, maybe it could be something like this. Reindeer. So it could be like that when it gets it. And first thing it's going to do is extract by an array this part portion and this portion. Now remember, 0 is going to get this side first, which is going to be nothing. Then 1 is going to be this, excuse me, this right here. 2 is going to be this right here. So we're going to loop through them, and we're going to find the left side by 3, which is going to leave this portion right here. That's what the 0, 0, 5 you saw here and up above. And then we keep this portion because we don't know what it is, so we can find out through the code saying, hey, do this with that portion. That's what this um, string right here without delimiter is. So it's the right side of everything except four. So that would make this portion right here. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that on my website. Thank you all for viewing this. This has been the rest of my day. Means sick. Sucks, doesn't it? All right. Thanks again. Have a nice day.